Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to dive into a very crucial aspect of Java multithreading that is designing thread safe classes. Don't worry if you are new to the topic, I will try to break it down into simple terms so that everyone can understand. So without any further delay, let's start. Now before we continue, let me just tell you that I have divided this video in the form of chapters. That means if you want to skip ahead to some specific topic, you can select it from the bottom of your screen and go to that particular chapter. Now let's start with the basics. What is thread safety? In the world of programming, thread safety is like traffic rules for our code. It ensures that when multiple parts of our program are running simultaneously, just like the cars or other vehicles on the road, everything should work smoothly without any collision or accident. So why is thread safety so important? Well, think of it in this way. Let's just expand the example that we have just discussed, which is traffic on the road. Now we know that the road is a shared resource, which will be used by multiple cars or other vehicles at the same time. Now suppose there is no traffic light present, then you can imagine the mess that will be created on the road when multiple cars and vehicles are trying to use that road. This will make the vehicles go very slow and it will result into multiple accidents too due to no synchronization between the vehicles which are running on the road. So what a traffic light does is it will make sure that at one time, one side of the road should be able to use the road and during that time, the other sides will have to wait for a particular time period. And once it's their time to use the road, they will get a green light and others will have the red light. While driving on the road, we follow the guidelines of road safety that will result into optimal time taken to travel and minimizes the accidents too. Thread safety is almost similar to the road safety. Similarly, in programming, without thread safety, our code might not produce the expected result when multiple threads are working together. When we have multiple threads working in our program, there are challenges. For example, one thread might be reading the data while other thread is trying to update it. We need to ensure that they don't interfere with each other. Designing thread safe classes helps us managing this complexity. Now let's talk about how we can design thread safe classes. There are mainly three key techniques to ensure our code runs smoothly with multiple threads. In this video, we will cover mainly the immutable classes because other techniques we have already seen in our previous videos. But before we discuss the immutable classes, let's just refresh the other two techniques very briefly. First, we have synchronized method or blocks. This is like having an ATM machine only one person can use the machine at a time. Similarly, in Java, we can mark a method as synchronized to ensure only one thread can access them at a given moment. Or we can tag a specific code block as synchronized block that will also ensure that only one thread can access them at a given moment. So using synchronized method or blocks, we will be able to make sure that our code runs smoothly when multiple threads are trying to access the critical section of the code. Now let's try to understand this with a very simple example. Consider a method that updates a bank account balance. Marking it as synchronized ensure that only one thread can modify the balance at any time that will prevent all the conflicts. I have already covered the synchronized methods and blocks in this series. Please check it out from the playlist. Link is already given in the description and on the top right corner of your screen too. Next we have volatile keyword. Think of it as a global announcement that everyone hears at the same time. In Java, making a variable as volatile ensures that all threads see the most up-to-date value. When any variable is declared volatile, then its value is always read from and written to the main memory instead of saving it in CPU cache. For instance, if we have a variable representing the number of available seats in the cinema, making it volatile ensures that all threads are aware of the current seat count that will avoid the confusion and no two different users will be able to book the same seat. For volatile keyword and its usage also, we have created a detailed video in the series. Please check it out from the playlist. Link is given in the description 
and on top right corner of your screen too. Now lastly, we have immutable objects. Now let's try to discuss this immutable objects in detail. An immutable object is like a message in a bottle. Once it is sealed, it cannot be changed. In Java, if we make our objects unchangeable, we eliminate the risk of threads altering them simultaneously. For instance, if we have a class, suppose representing a book, making it immutable ensures that its title and other content remains constant. No thread can mess with the book's content once it is created. Now let us discuss immutable objects in detail. Now the main question is what exactly are the immutable objects and why do we need them? Immutable objects are objects whose state cannot be modified after they are created. Once an immutable object is instantiated, its internal state including its field cannot be changed. Any operation that appears to modify the object that will actually result into a new object. So the existing object will not be changed. The most common example of immutable object in Java is string. We know when we assign a new string literal to any string object, then it does not update the existing value, but it creates a new literal in the string pool and return its reference. Now let us see how we can make any custom class immutable in detail. For making any class immutable, we need to follow certain rules. Starting with class declaration, we need to declare the class final. Why do we need to declare the class final? By making the class final, it prevents other classes from extending it and potentially introduce a mutable behavior. So if we declare the class final itself, no other class will be able to extend it. So the immutability will be intact. Then we have instance variables. Now declare the instance variables or the fields as private and final to ensure they cannot be modified after the object is created. So whatever values are assigned to them, that will not be changed after once it is created. After that, we have constructor. So we should have a public constructor that should be initializing all the final fields during the object creation. And once those fields are initialized in the constructor, their value will never be changed because they are already declared as final. Next is getter methods. We need to provide the getter methods so that the values can be accessed. Make sure you should not provide any setter method that will violate the immutability contract. But getter methods will be required because external classes will need to read the values which are present in that immutable object. So for that, getter methods should be there. We should also avoid modifiable return types. If uh, the class has some other functional methods that return objects, let's say collection object, then we need to ensure that the returned objects are also immutable. Now by following these steps, you ensure that instances of your class cannot be modified after they are created and it promotes thread safety also. Now enough with the theory, let's implement one use case to understand the immutability concept in detail. Now we have a scenario and the scenario is uh, we have a requirement to create a class to store the detail of a book. The detail can be author and title of the book. We need to have two additional functionalities in this class. Suppose we already have a book with the author and title, but using the same book object, we want to create a new book by just updating the author so that the title can remain same. It's like a newer version of that book with the changed author. And similarly, another requirement is to update the title by keeping the author same. This will represent the new book published by the same author. Now let us code the solution for this scenario and then we will verify the details. Okay, now here we have our class book, which we have declared as final as per our first rule that we have discussed. Now we have two instance variables inside that. One is to use to store the author name and the second one is to use to store the title detail. And then we have a constructor which is used to set the value of title and author. Now we can see that we have made both the fields as private and final. And once its values are set during this constructor, its value cannot be changed. 
now we have the getter methods so these getter methods are doing just returning whatever is the value present in author and title now we need to make sure again that we should not provide any method that should be able to change or set the value of these fields now after that we have implemented both the requirements that we have discussed first one was modified title so in that we have this function book with new title and it will return an instance of book and we are passing a new title in that so if you see inside this particular method we are returning a new book using the same author so this dot author it will return the author detail present in the current object on which this method is called and a new title which is being passed as a parameter and similarly for modified author we have this method book with new author and we are passing the detail of author so similar to the previous method uh, there we were using the same author detail here we are using the same title detail using this dot title and a new author is used which whose value is already passed as a parameter and using these two values a new book object is created and returned back now with these two we have implemented the extra functionality which is required and in the end just to uh, print the complete detail of the book I have overridden this two string method as well there I am printing what is the author value what is the title and what is the hash code of that particular object so we will be able to identify we will create multiple books and then we will be able to identify using this third value print that all those objects are different so by following all those rules which we have just discussed we have created this book class as immutable so any object which is being created for this book class will be immutable object now let's try to implement the demo class and try to see some output also so this is our demo class where the main method is available so the first book which I am creating here is uh, with the author lazy programmer and the title is multi threading journey and after that we are just printing this particular book and this particular book what it will do it will use this overridden two string method and it will print author is equal to whatever author I am setting title whatever title we are setting and it will find the hash code of that particular book object itself and print that on the console after that we are creating another book but with the new author so what we are doing we are using the same old book object on top of that we are calling book with new author and passing the new author as Aman and again it will return a new book which we are storing in book to reference and we are printing book to reference as well similarly to test the third functionality also uh, we are using again the same old book object and calling book with new title and we are passing executor service as a title that means the same lazy programmer author will have a new book with title executor service in case of second book we will have the same book of title multi-threading journey but with a changed author which is Aman and we are printing all these three books now let us just execute and observe the output so here you can see all three books are printed and you can see the hash code is different for all these three so using this we have achieved immutability for book class now I hope till this point everything is clear in case you have any doubt please let me know in the comment section below now in the end let's talk about the potential benefits and drawbacks of using immutable objects the first benefit is thread safety immutable objects are inherently thread safe since their state cannot be modified after creation multiple threads can safely read the object without the risk of data inconsistency then there is simplified code with immutability you avoid complex logic related to mutable state changes that can result in simpler and more predictable code immutable objects are suitable for caching purpose also once an object is created it can be safely cached since its state will not be changed so it's a perfect option for caching now last but not the least sharing the object 
So the immutable objects can be freely shared among different parts of the program without the concerns about unintended modifications. While immutability brings many advantages to the table, it is not without any drawbacks. The first major drawback is memory overhead. Immutable objects and collections may result in increased memory consumption since they require creation of new instances every time some modification is needed. This overhead may be noticeable in scenarios with large datasets. The second drawback can be performance trade-offs. Immutable objects can impact performance, especially in cases where frequent modifications are required. In such scenarios, mutable objects may be the better choice. Now let us explore a couple of practical scenarios where immutability is beneficial. Number one is configuration settings. So immutable objects are ideal for representing the configuration settings that ensures that the setting cannot be changed during the runtime. The second use case could be caching. The immutable collections are well suited for caching data as the data cannot be modified that leads to the predictable cache behavior. Now remember immutability is not a silver bullet. The choice of using immutable objects depend on the specific requirement and characteristics of your application. So you cannot go blindly with the immutability option. The matter of fact is that we cannot go blindly with any approach for designing your application. We have to weigh in the multiple trade-offs and constraints before deciding the best fit solution. Okay, so that was it. If you found this video useful, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe and share it with your fellow programmers. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below. I will see you in the next video. Till then, happy coding.